Hello and welcome to our service on Sunday the 15th of August. I'm Gary and I trust and pray that as you join us you will feel encouraged and know God's presence with you. That as we worship together and as we go from here into the world that you will have known God's presence with you and that you will have grown in your faith. As we gather together as a church online, it is with sadness that we learned of the passing of our dear sister, Elaine Proctor, who went to be with the Lord last Sunday evening. Our thoughts and prayers are with her son, Ian, Gillian, and the family circle. Unfortunately, we've had to postpone the parish barbecue and picnic uh, further details of new dates will be available in September. We gather today to worship the Lord. Uh, and it's a very sacred moment. And we gather together for a very sacred purpose. We sing psalms and hymns and sacred songs. And we respond to the melody that the Lord has placed in our hearts. So let's make the most of today, our time together. Let's put aside all those things that would distract us and for these few moments think about the Lord and let's hear his voice speaking into our lives. As we begin I want to use a prayer that's taken from our communion service. It's called the Collect for Purity. And many of you will have prayed it often. Some of you may never have heard of it. And it's a beautiful prayer. And it's prayed at the beginning of the service as we prepare to worship and receive communion. We ask God to open our hearts, to pour in his Holy Spirit, that we would worship him with pure hearts and with lives that sing his glory. And so we pray together, Almighty God, 
Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. We worship together as we sing those beautiful words, Be Thou My Vision, O Lord of My Heart. It's one thing singing for that God would be our vision. It's another thing actually following that through of trusting God and making the most of every opportunity that God gives to us. And that's what Paul is writing about to the church in Ephesus. And that's our reading today. And we're going to hear what Paul says to the church and what the Holy Spirit says to us. Ephesians chapter 5 and verse 15. Be very careful then how you live, not as unwise, but as wise, making the most of every opportunity, because the days are evil. Therefore, do not be foolish, but understand what the Lord's will is. 
Do not get drunk on wine, which leads to debauchery. Instead, be filled with the Spirit, speaking to one another with psalms, hymns and songs from the Spirit. Sing and make music from your heart to the Lord, always giving thanks to God the Father for everything in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Sometimes preachers are accused of speaking in riddles. God forbid that I do. But Paul clearly speaks without riddles as he writes to the church and encourages us to make the most of every opportunity. I want to begin just these few moments together as we actually think about some riddles. And I want you to see if you can work out the answer to these riddles. I belong to you, but your friends use me more. What am I? What belongs to you that your friends use more? That's right. If you said your name, you've got it right. Second one, what am I? I have a tail and a head, but have no body. What am I? A tail, a body, no body, a head, no body. What am I? I'm a coin. Okay. Next one, the more you take, the more you leave behind. What do you take more of and you leave behind more? Think about it, when you're walking on a beach, you look behind, what do you leave behind? Footprints. So the more you take, the more you leave behind. This one's for me. What begins with tea finishes with tea and has tea in it. That's right, it's a teapot. What's full of holes but still holds water? A sponge. Okay, here's a difficult one. David's parents have three sons, Snap, Crackle and... Wait for it. Who said Pop? Guess what? You're wrong. Listen to what the question said. David's parents have three sons, Snap, Crackle and... David, that's right. What am I? I'm tall when I'm young and I'm short when I'm old. What's tall when it's young, but the more you use it, the longer it it burns, it's shorter. What is it? It's a candle. What am I? I have hands and cannot clap. I'm a clock. And then finally, Uh, This leads us into what Paul's talking about. I can crawl, I can fly, I have hands but have no legs or wings. What am I? Anyone guess time? If you did, then you're right. Time is one of those funny things. You know, throughout our lives, we make time, we take time, we save time, we mark time, we kill time, we race against time, we wish there was more time. But worst of all, what's the worst thing you can do with time? Well, Paul tells us the worst thing we can do with it is waste time. And that's why Paul writes to the church. And he's writing to the church, not in a riddle. He's saying it loud and clear. He says, be careful then how you live, not as unwise, but as wise, making the most of every opportunity because the days are evil. In writing to the church and perhaps through the Holy Spirit, this is something Paul wants us all to hear today. Don't waste your time. Make the most of every opportunity. Our time here on earth is so important, it's so crucial, that we should treat it as one of the most valuable gifts that God has given us, apart from our Lord Jesus Christ. Freddie Mercury, when he was the leader of Queen, he sung those wonderful words, Who wants to live forever? And you know, there are many people who like him, 
at times have lived their lives as if they were never going to expire, as if they were never going to die. And tragically, his life reminds us that our days here on earth are limited. You will die. I will die. Sooner or later, we're all going to die. Time is going to run out. Time will be no more. And Paul says, look, don't waste your time. Make the most of every opportunity. Why? Because the days are evil. I've no need to remind you today of how evil the world around us really is. What was considered bad is now considered good. Things we would never have dreamed of being legal have now been legalised. The world can and is a dark place for many, many people. We hear of war in Afghanistan and the countless number of conflicts that are going on around the world at any given time. We hear of the climate change. We hear of hunger. We see children being used in all kinds of horrendous situations. We hear of parents killing their children. We hear of gunmen killing members of their own family and community. And Paul says, look, make the most of every opportunity. God is asking you to do something. Make the most of your time here on earth. Don't join in with the others who are creating this mess, but use this time on earth to do something for God. You know, Jesus came into this world not just to save us, so that he could use us to make the world a better place. You know, Jesus is the light of the world, and through his Holy Spirit, if we are willing, he allows us to become his light in the world, so that we use the opportunity that God has given us to go and to do something to make the world a better place. Whether we speak a word of justice into a situation which needs to be resolved, whether we we help projects that are working with people who are being trafficked, whether we are going out of our way to see that no one is forgotten. You know, Paul is asking us to make the most of every opportunity to do something for God. I wonder how many of you have a bucket list. You know, those things that people want to do before they die. You know, there's all kinds of things in those bungee on in those bucket lists sorry i'm thinking of perhaps one of the worst things that i would be ever asked to do and that's do a bungee jump but you know most of the things in our bucket list they're okay and you know god's okay with the things that we we wish for yet the things we we put into those buckets very often reflects our priorities in life And the reading today warns us to choose wisely what we put into our bucket list. But not only what we put in, but what we might choose to leave out. Do you know, Paul tells us in this reading, do not be foolish, but understand what the will of the Lord is. You know, For you today, the bucket list might be going to America. It may be swimming with the dolphins and and they're fun. But, you know, understanding what the will of the Lord is, well, that's serious. And, you know, as I said, the world we live in 
can be a dark and evil place. Human trafficking, climate change, cyberbullying, inequality, war. My friends, they're happening now. They're happening all around us. And God sent his son into the world to save you, that you might do something to make the world a better place. God pours his spirit into you so his light might shine through you. And isn't it amazing? The God who created the universe is the same God who is saying to you today, do something. Know his will for your life. But the question is, how do we do that? Well, thankfully, Paul doesn't leave us in the dark. In Ephesians 5, 18, he says, Don't get drunk with wine, for that is debauchery, but be filled with the Holy Spirit. I wonder, can you tell if someone is drunk, even if you've never seen them have a drink? And you know, the answer is yes, you can. You know, have you ever watched a drunk person walk they're sort of staggering all over the place. Have you noticed how they talk? Uh, their speech becomes very slurred. Or how they think? You know, they're no longer in control. Why? Because the drink's controlling them. And Paul said, look, don't be like those people who are filled with the influences of this world, who are being controlled by those things, but instead be filled with the Spirit of God so that who you are, your behaviour, your speech and your walk is controlled by God so that when people look at you and the things you do, they know you are a Christian. How many times have we looked and thought to ourselves, that man over there, that woman is drunk. Look at them. How many times have people looked at you and said, look, there's a Christian. You know, one of the things that, that drunks like to do is, is sing. And that's something that Paul goes on then to encourage the church to do. He says, address one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody to the Lord with all your heart. Anyone who knows me knows I love to sing. And when the grandchildren are here or when my nephew and nieces are here. You know, I like to sing in a way that really winds them up. And they go, Grandad, would you please be quiet? You know, I may not have a note in my head, but I'm going to sing to the Lord with all my heart. You know, I'm a bit like Martin Luther, who reformed the church 500 years ago. I'm going to say and ask the question, why should the devil have all the good music? Because music is powerful. Music is influential. Music can change an atmosphere for the good or for the worse. Think of the movies you watch or the TV programs, how the music is carefully selected to build up into a moment of suspense or a time of sadness, or a time of, of romance, or a time of, of horror. Do you know music can be used to soothe a baby? It can be used to evoke emotions in a football stadium. Music can change a person. I remember growing up in, in the 70s and, and 80s. And some of my friends were, were into the, what we called dark metal music. And, you know, they were into this head banging and listening to these lyrics that somehow changed their personalities. And, you know, it, it caused them to be different people. Do you know, music 
isn't something that should be controlled by the devil. Music is something that we use to glorify God. The Methodist movement, it took some of the most popular folklore tunes and put hymns to them. And you know, they say if the devil is going to create havoc in a church, he's going to do it through the music. Do you know, music can be used for good or for evil. And Paul encourages us to use it for good. He says, look, use the, use the most of every opportunity. You know, make the most of your time. Don't waste it. The days are dark. You know, God is asking you to do something in the world. He's asking you to be influential. And so sing. Sing to one another. Do you know, sing psalms and hymns and allow those words not only to be an instrument through which we worship God, but also to be a channel through which God changes us. You know, some of those great hymns of victory, you know, they remind us of the victory that Jesus has won over evil. There is power, power, wonder-working power in the blood. You know, those hymns remind us of God's presence. God is always near me, hearing what I say. It reminds us that we are loved. Jesus loves me. This I know. It reminds me that when the world is spiralling out of control, he's got the whole world in his hands. You know, music can and music does influence us. It points us to God and it lifts up our soul. You know, music has this amazing ability to open us to God so that he can fill us with his Holy Spirit. And you know, the more we are filled with the Holy Spirit, the more we become like Jesus. And the more like Jesus we are, the more we make the most of every opportunity we have while we are alive. And you know, Paul says, look, don't waste time. Make the most of every opportunity. Be influential. Sing and let people see the joy of the Lord. And then finally, Give thanks always and for everything to God the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Did you hear that? Paul says, give thanks always. Give thanks for everything. And you know, when we do that, when you give thanks to God in every circumstances, for everything that comes your way, we're told in Philippians 4, that the peace of God that passes all understanding will guard your hearts and minds in the knowledge and the peace of Jesus Christ. You know, there's a prayer in the Church of Ireland, funeral service, and I believe it reflects what Paul is saying to the church about using our time wisely and applying our hearts to wisdom. And it says, grant us, Lord, the wisdom and the grace to use aright the time that is left to us here on earth. Lead us to repent of our sins, the evil we have done and the good we have not done. And strengthen us to follow in the steps of your Son in the way that leads to the fullness of eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Perhaps today you realise that you have left God out of your bucket list. Or you perhaps haven't been using the time that, that God has given you wisely. Then I would encourage you in a moment to say those words with me again. 
Perhaps you need to be filled with the Holy Spirit. Perhaps you have backslidden. And perhaps you need to repent of some of the sin that, that's in your life in order for God to fill you again. So I invite you to say these words with me in a moment. Perhaps you need a reminder of living a life of thankfulness. And then I would invite you to join those prayers with me, that we would follow the steps of Jesus, who at all times and in all things give thanks to God. I want to say to you today, wherever you are, whoever you are today, use the most of every opportunity. Do something for God. So I invite you to pray with me. Grant us. Grant us, Lord, the wisdom and the grace to use aright the time that is left to us here on earth. Lead us to repent of our sins, the evil we have done and the good we have not done. And strengthen us to follow the steps of your Son in the way that leads to the fullness of eternal life. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. We're going to continue in worship as we sing that wonderful hymn, Bless the Lord, O My Soul. And on in that hymn, we sing the words, And on that day, when my strength is failing, when our time here on earth is drawing to an end, still our souls will still praise God's name unending, giving thanks to him for everything.
and let us pray. Everlasting God, as we approach your throne of grace in humility and simplicity, we ask that you will hear our prayers of thanksgiving and intercession. Almighty God, we pray for the churches in the Kit group of parishes, for the churches and fellowships in our community, and for those who join us online, that we would be given a clearer vision of the gospel, that you would direct us to be relevant, to be focused, to serve you as we would seek to be the light of Jesus to those around us. And Creator God, we thank you for the beauty of your created world, for its wonderful variety and the bounty that it brings forth. Lord, help us to be good stewards, showing love and friendship to all people and enjoying the warmth and the light that they bring into our lives. Lord, be close to all those who govern, ensuring the decisions that they make day by day are for the benefit of all the people entrusted to them in their leadership. Lord, we pray for the ongoing and developing situation in Afghanistan and those other parts of our world where there is war. We pray, Lord God, for those working tirelessly to bring light into the world's darkest places, whether through the forces of the crown or those organisations that work with the weak, the vulnerable, the neglected, the trodden on, the abused. Lord, prosper their work and may the light of Christ shine bright and dispel evil in Jesus name and Father God we pray for our own communities and all of our neighbours we thank you also for our families and friends and we bring before you now those we know with particular needs we pray for your peace and love to surround them that your presence would bring comfort, health and strength. And gracious God, we thank you for those we know who are on the road to recovery and for the miracle of healing. We pray for all who minister to the sick and the infirm, both at home and in hospital care centres. Lord, we name before you now those we know who are ill are in need of our prayers, asking that through these requests they may all experience the light of the gospel and a real sense of your healing presence. And merciful God, we pray for those whose lives have been shattered by the death of someone close and dear to them. We pray for members of our natural and church families who have lost loved ones. We pray for the Proctor family and for all those families whose anniversaries of loved ones passings are at this time. And faithful God, we ask you to receive our intercessions and thanksgivings on behalf of the church and the world. Hear our prayers and reward our stewardship of this earth with the riches of heaven. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who taught us when we pray to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. 
Amen. We're going to draw our service towards a close as we sing that beautiful hymn, My Heart is Filled with Thankfulness. I would ask you to pay particular attention to the final two lines of the hymn. For every day I have on earth is given by the King, so I will give my life my all to love and to follow him. Let's make the most of every opportunity and let's be thankful for all things and for Jesus. draw our service to a close as we say together the grace. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all this day and evermore. Amen. Thank you for joining us for worship. I trust and pray that the Lord goes with you and that you have a good week. So go in peace to love and serve the Lord in the name of Christ. Amen. i
the grace of God. 